The original Antrim Castle was constructed in 1613 for Sir Hugh Clotworthy. In 1813, the castle was completely rebuilt, taking the form of a more elegant, castellated mansion. It was a truly enchanting home that was much admired, and many now express regret that more was not done to save the structure, following a devastating fire there in 1922. On the 28th of October that year, Lord and Lady Masserine hosted a lavish dinner for six esteemed guests. The convivial evening concluded with a game of bridge before the guests retired around midnight. House staff extinguished the fire in the library and concluded their own duties before also retiring for the night. At approximately 3.30am, one of the guests, Colonel Richardson, awoke to discover that his room was full of smoke. Richardson went to alert his hosts, but the house was already well ablaze. Guests and staff began to evacuate, some making their way down a back stair, while others scrambled to gather ropes made of bedsheets and climbed out of the windows. One even jumped from her upstairs window to avoid the flames. Further fires were discovered as the occupants scrambled to leave, with some attempting to save paintings and other valuables from the advancing inferno. Lord Masserin gave the order to activate the fire hydrants, but the enormous water tanks that would have helped to drench the flames were mysteriously empty. With local fire crews occupied elsewhere, local people have now descended on the castle, trying in vain to tackle the fire with water from the garden ponds, but they were fighting a losing battle. As the efforts continued, a headcount of guests and staff was being carried out when cries for help were heard coming from the servants' quarters on the top floor. With police now on site, several ladders were hastily put together so that they could reach the window where two maids were waiting, but a third was still inside. Ethel Gilligan was a 19-year-old maid, and she was missing. A young officer ascended the ladder and eventually managed to locate the unconscious young woman and carry her out of the burning building, but it was too late. Ethel was dead. An official inquiry was launched into the cause of the fire. Many great houses at the time were being burnt, and there were several anomalies in this case that pointed towards a malicious attack on the castle and its prominent owners. But still, Judge Thompson decided not to grant compensation for loss of property, possessions, or the paltry sum claimed for the loss of poor Ethel's life. Despite protests, what remained of the once fine castle was mostly demolished in the 1970s, leaving only the distinctive Italian stair tower. The 19th century gatehouse, known as Clotworthy House, also remains, as of course do the fine gardens. Visitors have reported hearing heavy breathing and the sound of footsteps emanating from the remains of the castle, and flickering lights have also been seen here. A mysterious lady in white has been spotted roaming the grounds on a few occasions, and this is believed to be the spirit of Ethel Gilligan. Her ghost has also been encountered in the gatehouse, which now serves as a museum and art space. In 1993, a security guard patrolling the grounds heard noises coming from inside the locked-up building on five consecutive nights. On four of those nights he went to investigate, believing that there was an intruder hiding inside, but each time he found the building to be completely empty. However, on the fifth night he saw the figure of a woman standing in one of the rooms. As he prepared to approach her, she simply vanished into thin air. Speaking of his encounter, the guard affirmed, I've been in this line of work for years and have sat in lots of deserted buildings at night. I haven't got an imaginative mind and I know what I saw and what I heard. So take it or leave it. For those who believe, no proof is necessary. For those who do not, no proof is possible. A phantom coach is said to reenact another tragic event that took place here during the 18th century. On the 31st of May, a coach with four horses left the castle and plunged into the Long Canal, drowning all those on board. 
It is thought that the driver may have been intoxicated and that he mistook the reflection on the water for the roadway. The spectral vision can reportedly be seen each year on the anniversary of that fateful night.